Hi there, and welcome back to M5 Stack official channel. I'm Luke, and in this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different this week. So recently, I discovered this Microblox. Uh, it's a scratch style programming interface, which has actually been developed by some of the early scratch team. And so I heard that there's now M5 Stack support in Microblox. So I thought, why not check it out? This is very recent. I think it was only added last week. See a little Hi. bit of an intro. This video will show you how to get started with Microblox, a new programming language for microcontrollers. We'll show you how to get set up with the, started with the micro bit. So it supports and quite a few different devices. We'll come back to that. For this video, we'll show you the process in Mac OS. So I'm going to go and download this. So I'm on Mac, but it supports a few different operating systems. Okay, so once we've downloaded and extracted. Okay, now we're in Microblocks. And I thought it would be a complicated procedure to install some firmware to have the M5 stack running with Microblocks, but it's incredibly simple actually. Currently, Microblox is only supporting the M5 stack core, but maybe they'll support some of our other devices in the future. As soon as I open it, it's recognized that I have my M5 stack core attached. I'll click OK. And it's automatically imported a bunch of libraries. And I was imagining that perhaps I would have to install some firmware, have some kind of complicated procedure to get set up. But it really is very simple. Literally a few clicks of a button. Go here, update firmware on board. And then I select the M5 stack core. And then within a few moments, the firmware is flashed on my device, ready to go. And then it automatically connects up the device. Here we go, we have it connected. So this seems to be in pretty early stages of development, but already there's quite a lot of the peripherals of the M5 stack supported. So uh, already the speaker, uh, simple implementation of the screen with the ILI 9351 TFT library, supported. So I'm just going to go through and demonstrate some of these features. So first we'll go to TFT. Um, so those familiar with Scratch will notice these rounded blocks. So these are to start your program. So when I drag this in here, um, I'm just going to do the classic Hello World. So first I'll set up the display. And then we have right blocks down here. And then I can drag this over a little bit so I can see the blocks more clearly. Okay, and now we're good to go. Now I just press play. And then instantaneously, I have the result on my M5 stack. So now let's try something a bit fancier. Um, we have here a lot of the graphics libraries. So we could set a pixel, and then we can set its color. Let's try, we'll draw a line. The M5 stack screen is 320 by 240. And then we can choose the RGB color here on the end. Okay, what else am I going to try? Uh, draw a rectangle. Uh, it seems a little bit strange, these numbers here. But now if I run that, Let's see the result. There we go. A nice line across, a rectangle, my text, and can't quite see that pixel, but I'm sure it's around somewhere. Probably underneath that line, I'd imagine. Okay, so along with that, we also have rounded rectangle, circle, triangle, etc. And then we can set pixel with uh, these numerical values. Okay, something nice that's been implemented here, which I think is pretty sweet, is um, what we have in the UI flow, we have the square, 
grid where you can click the blocks. Here they've imp implemented it in a similar way. So we'll just drag that over there. And now you can see the result here. And of course, we can make animations with it just as we do in UI Flow. So we can add in a delay. Well, let's have a loop first, okay? So we'll drag these in here. Very similar to Scratch, so a lot of those familiar with Scratch, I think, will have no problem in using this. And as you may have seen at the start, it runs on quite a few different microcontrollers. Then play. And then over oh, hey. Okay, now let's switch over and see the speaker control. So we can actually control things with the buttons. I think since this has been designed more for um, micro bit to start off with, we've only got A and B buttons, but I'm sure that'll change later on. So if we go into tone now, I can play different, different tone uh, on the press of both buttons. We'll give that a go. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Already we could make a nice little tune there. Okay, and then what's what is really pretty cool, I thought, was uh, we already have some nice uh, IoT stuff in here labeled Web of Things. So um, we can easily get our device set up. Just need to enter our network name and password. And then to prove that we've got connected, we can use those uh, TFT blocks. And then um, we can drag that block in there for the IP address. Pop that in there. Get the IP address to show on the screen. So I'll play that. Okay, we can see even there it shows the IP address above. That's pretty nice. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other blocks which I haven't gone into much depth yet. Not looked in there. Um, if we go here, we can see there's other bunches of libraries uh, with NeoPixel. Um, I'll have a test of these later. And also DHT for the humidity, temperature, and air pressure sensor. And a bunch of other stuff here. Servos as well. It's pretty nice. And then it's supported in a whole bunch of lang languages, which is pretty nice. And then there are more advanced blocks here. So we can set I2C, SPI more advanced control. All in all, it's shaping up to be something pretty nice. Um, so I'd say watch this space for microblocks. Seems they have a nice team creating this application and uh, I'm sure we'll see great things from it in the future. Okay, that's all for this week. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to try out microblocks. Leave us a comment and remember to subscribe, like, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.